Three, that's the number of people very close to Prince Harry who warned him against marrying Meghan Markle. This week, Tatler published a corker of a story about the Duchess of Sussex's first year as a fully-fledged Windsor. In among the salacious, but credibly sourced, details, such as the fact Kensington Palace staff called her Megan when she leaves the room to make a green juice, was the revelation that Hatzer had banished his best mate Tom, Skippy and skip for telling the royal ranger he shouldn't settle down with the Suits star. According to the Society magazine, Skippy was an ultra-loyal and tight-lipped mate. In fact, the boy's friendship dates back to nearly two decades. He was there doing JJ bombs with Harry during his infamous 2012 Las Vegas jaunt, which gave a whole new meaning to seeing the crown jewels and it was at his 2017 wedding in Jamaica that Harry first introduced Meghan to his closest mates. When Skippy voiced his apprehension about Meghan as a potential royal bride, Harry is said to have cruelly cut him from his inner circle. Not only that, but the poor old Etonian faced the extraordinary humiliation during last year's royal wedding of being left off the guest list for the glamorous nighttime reception, in favor of such old friends, cough as Oprah and Emil Clooney. The Tatler story also revealed that while Prince Charles was initially impressed by Meghan, he said, I just hope he doesn't marry her. And then, let's not forget that it was Prince William's qualms about Harry tying the knot with the actress that was the initial cause of the brother's estrangement. So, three people warned Harry that marrying Meghan was a big, fat, bad idea. And now, Three important relationships in his life have been badly damaged by his decision to wed Meghan anyway. Which is not to say she is solely responsible here. We've all had friends who become idiots when they fall nauseatingly in love. And that has got to be a big, flashing, red warning sign in regards to the future of his marriage. Harry clearly had no interest in listening to the three or watching season one of The Crown. If he had he would have seen that this particular romantic predicament when a royal is gagging to say I do with a less than perfect match and the family intervenes to say no has played out before. If he had settled in for a Netflix binge he would have known that when Princess Margaret was deciding whether she should marry group Captain Peter Townsend, her mother and sister both wisely counseled her against it. And if he had ever read much, beyond back copies of FHM, he would know that years later, she grudgingly admitted that, while it was deeply painful at the time, Listening to her family was the best course of action. When we are swept off our feet, when we are doe-eyed and drunk on love, it is our oldest friends who drag us, kicking and screaming, back to reality. True mates will, kindly, read you the riot act and collectively try and beat some sense into your infatuated brain. Because they are the ones who know you best and have some semblance of impartiality and distance. They can see potential issues and speed bumps ahead in a relationship while you are mooning over the 878 photos you took of your new love in the last 24 hours. Look at this one of him trimming his nose hair. Isn't he divine? Impetuous, crazy love is finite and it is when that flush of infatuation passes that your new love's foibles and issues finally become apparent, such as, say, when you are living in the garden of your grand's house and your best friend thinks you're a tool and your brother has cut you loose and your dad seems to be making the best of a bad situation, such as, when your wife insists on insta-perfect stunts during official events and building a yoga studio and making you give up the booze and incorporating a $46,000 multimedia screen in your baby's nursery. All true FYI. That is when harsh reality situation really and truly sets in. Lucky Harry has his newfound love of yoga to help him think straight. Is very rare or should we say, non-existent that we see Kate Middleton lose her cool in public. The royal, who always appears with her game face for the cameras, seems to pleasantly laugh off any potentially awkward situation with ease and so, we were intrigued to find out that the Duchess of Cambridge has let her temper out in public before. Kate always appears so cool and collected. In Kate, the future queen by Kate Nichol. The book reveals many aspects of Kate's life that we never knew. From her first crush who's now a famous actor to previous jobs before becoming a royal, the book gives a lot of insight. 
But one particular thing that's highlighted is a time that Kate lost her temper while working at Ocean Village Marina in Southampton. Kate, whose jobs included giving safety demonstrations to customers, washing the decks and packing away the sails was pranked by fellow colleagues one day in which they were called. According to the book, her co-workers rigged her life vest so condoms fell out of the jacket while she was giving a safety demo. Cal Tomlinson, who was working with Kate said, when she pulled the toggle, the thing inflated and a load of condoms fell out. She was mortified and very embarrassed. She took it more seriously than the others might have, but she wasn't thrown off her stride. She was angry at first, but she settled down, and I don't remember her ever getting them back. Not ideal. We can imagine it's one Kate can still remember herself. You can read the full story in the book Kate, The Future Queen, available to purchase here. Meghan Markle must drop her Hollywood image and stop trying to be an international star, a royal expert has said, insisting the Duchess must meet demands of the monarchy first. Meghan, who formerly starred in the hit US series Suits, was thrust into the global spotlight when she started dating Prince Harry. The Duchess of Sussex soon started to outshine other well-loved royals which the nation had taken to its heart from Kate, the Duchess of Cambridge to the Queen herself. However. A royal expert said the Duchess A-list Hollywood persona is not appropriate for the royal family and she must let the other royals shine first. Anna Pastnak, author of The Real Wallace Simpson, told Yahoo's Royal Box, she doesn't understand that she cannot be this international star on this global stage, that is the Queen, then Charles, then William and Kate. They have to be the stars that's what ensures continuity in the monarchy. The House of Windsor has done incredibly well to stay together when many other European royal houses have collapsed, and they've done it because they recognize who has to be the main event. She seems to want to bring her own style into the monarchy and I don't think that's appropriate and I don't think it's going to work long term. Ems Pasternak blasted Meghan's lavish baby shower getaway in New York which cost almost £500,000, including a £98,500 round-trip flight in a luxury private jet. She said, I thought that was in very poor taste actually when the country is in a state of extreme anxiety and flux and many people are suffering financially I think you can't have it both ways. I don't think you can on the one hand say to people, save the planet, save plastic and then be revving up a massive carbon footprint going for a lavish baby shower in New York. I don't think it looks good and I don't think it's appropriate. In recent months rumors emerged of a feud between Meghan and her sister-in-law Kate, amid Meghan and Harry's big move to Frogmore Cottage in Windsor. Ems Pasternak believes the rumors to be untrue but insists Meghan must get out of her fairy tale mindset and stop trying to modernize the royal family. She added, I think they're undoubtedly true. William is very responsible, he knows what his role is and Kate has come alongside that and executed that extremely well. I think it's quite difficult to have had Meghan who seems to want to modernize and set her own agenda and you can't have it all. You cannot have your freedom and this privilege. So it is a Faustian pact. It's not a fairy tale and Markle needs to recognize that and live with consequences. Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex, will break royal protocol after she has given birth, her friend has revealed. The 37-year-old left the palace astonished after she said she didn't want help following the arrival of the royal baby. She is expected to give birth to Prince Harry's first child in the spring, and now her friend has claimed she doesn't want a team of nannies to give her support. According to New Magazine, the source said, she's determined not to do things the conventional way. Meghan's already told palace chiefs that she and Harry want to be hands-on parents. She doesn't want a team of nannies, which is unheard of for a new mum in the royal household. Meghan feels she wants to show other women out there that she's independent and strong and can relate to new mums who don't have the luxury of having a lot of extra help. The Duchess mum Doria Ragland is expected to come to the UK ahead of the birth. Reports suggest that she may be moving into their new home in Frogmore Cottage as the couple readjust to parenthood. The news comes after Meghan's friend revealed the royal would have a natural birth. The friend added, 
Megan is determined it will be a totally natural experience and she's insisting absolutely no pain relief. She's practicing a series of yoga labor coping techniques that mainly focus around breathing patterns and also chanting in rhythm to overcome pain. The couple has been expected to move into Frogmore Cottage soon. However, due to problems with building work, they have been unable to. In the same interview, it was revealed Meghan and Harry had spent more than £150,000 on a new nursery for the child. <laughs>